So let's talk about a movie that I liked, but absolutely no one else did. It's kind of like Speed Racer or Batman vs. Superman. Uh, Gods of Egypt. So this movie came out in 2016. Nobody saw it. The trailer made it look horrible. I was never going to watch it because it was super long and it just didn't look very good. But it was on Netflix and I wanted to put something on in the background. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just take a look at it. And honestly, I really liked it. It's not a bad movie at all. It's a lot of fun. It kind of reminds me of The Mummy or Zorro or just kind of a good old fashioned over the top epic adventure movie. Much better than something like Clash of the Titans. Even if it is kind of cheesy, I, I, I do appreciate the fact that it's based on Egyptian mythology. And I, I just gotten through that huge lecture series about ancient Egypt. And so like a lot of the stuff in this was familiar to me, like a lot of the mythology, a lot of the uh, Egyptian culture and stuff. And I mean, obviously a movie like this is an attempting to be accurate, but they did reference and in, in kind of incorporate a lot of the, the major themes, I guess you could say, from, from ancient Egypt. And, and it was interesting kind of seeing it brought to life. Um, it, it was cool seeing Horus. Uh, transform into like the metal Vulcan and fly around. It was cool to see Sad, Anubis, Toph, uh, Hathor. It was just kind of it was neat to see all the gods. I I hadn't really seen a movie like this before. It's 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 in a mythology that's often kind of sidelined in favor of making yet another Greek mythological movie. Uh, I would like to see some movies about other pantheons like the Middle East, like the uh, mesopotamian gods like marduk and ashur and ishtar and, and those i'd also like to see uh maybe more movies with the norse gods maybe some gallic gods get get kind of a, a bit of a mixture in there it doesn't always have to be about greek and, and at, at kind of a base level it, the movie was just more interesting than me to me because i was less familiar with the source material now, the main reason that people attacked this film was because the cast was mostly white. Now, that's kind of a misnomer because it, it kind of wasn't. The main character is played by, uh, sorry, Horace is played by Jamie Lannister, which is an interesting choice. Jared Butler plays the plays set, and he does a good job as he always does. Uh, Jeffrey Rush is the sun god Ra. And some guy I never heard of is the the main character. So you got a couple white guys, although Toth is black. Hawthor is a Hapa. And the main girl is a Quappa. I think she's a quarter like Maori or an eighth Maori, but she's a massive QT. But those two, those the Hapa and the Quappa don't count. They don't count as diversity. The black guy doesn't count as diversity. This movie was was ethnically insensitive. Now, when they when they make Julius Caesar or Richard the Third, and they cast a black guy in that role, that's not ethnic. That's not um, ethnically insensitive. That's not changing history um, to put them in, like to put a bunch of black guys like like Jamie Foxx and Robin Hood. That's perfectly okay. But if you do it in this context, it's bad. Now, the ethnicity of the ancient Egyptians is one of the most hotly debated topics. From what we know, the Egyptians, the northern Egyptians, were definitely Caucasians. Now, does that mean they were white? Well, it depends on your definition of white. Um, are Indians Caucasian? Are Indians white? Uh, not not normally defined that way, but they are. They are Caucasians. They are fairly closely related to. The, the people of uh, the rest of the Caucasoid race. If you look at Iranian DNA, Iranians cluster extremely close with the Europeans, but they aren't normally considered white. Um, Turks aren't considered white, but a lot of Turks are very European looking. Maronites generally aren't. It's, it's kind of, it's a spectrum. It's a continuum, as it were. So were the Egyptians like blonde hair, blue eyed? No, although... Ramses the second for as far as we know had red hair and red hair was not unheard of I don't think blonde hair was was unheard of and I don't think light eyes were completely unheard of uh, when the Egyptians drew themselves they made themselves red 
Libyans were pale and Nubians were black. So I'd imagine there was kind of a mixture uh, within ancient Egypt, but I would imagine most of the population were dark skinned Caucasians. So is it, is it really that ethnically insensitive? I don't, it's, I think you can kind of cast just about anybody as ancient Egyptians because it was, it, I'd imagine it's a society where you have Nubians, you have uh, people from Greece, you have um, Levantines, you have a whole bunch of, of different people there. It is kind of at the cross worlds of the roads of the world. And it is, it does cover quite a bit of territory. My point being that the whole controversy was just really stupid, but it's, it's only a controversy if a white or a Jewish person plays um, a character. Like I remember in Ghost in the Shell, there is that huge issue because Scarlett Johansson was playing uh, the major. My, my problem with that is like the controversy, other than the fact that I just don't really care and it's nice for them to get a taste of their own medicine. Um, it was actually incorporated as part of the story, as part of the alienation and confusion of her character that she was, that her mind was placed into the body of a different race and that she didn't look anything like her mother. So onto the movie itself. So the movie itself wasn't bad. Um, Jamie Lannister did a, an interesting job as Horace. Basically, the plot is that Osiris has decided that he's going to step down. He's become an old man. And that's interesting that the gods can age in this. They aren't strictly immortal. They just live a very long time. And that's always kind of an interesting thing when you're depicting pagan gods. Because they are kind of like in an intermediate state. They aren't like God, obviously, with an uppercase G, the creator of everything, the, the ineffable, the incomprehensible, incom divine, the first and the last. They aren't like that, but they aren't like humans either. So you kind of have to portray them as, as a mixture. And this was kind of one of the things I found really interesting about Dark Souls, like how Gwen is the sun, but he's also a god. So he, he's in the heavens as the sun, but he's also like a man on earth. And that's the same thing like in this, like Ra is the sun, but he's also like some dude who's getting very old, who's getting up in years. Um, and that's kind of the interesting thing, because you have these gods that are the embodiment of a metaphysical force in a lot of ways. But they're also just some random guy like Hawthor is love. And I imagine if she dies, then then love would die with her. But she's also a woman who can be killed by other immortals. And I always find that interesting. An interesting aspect of it is, is that kind of how you deal with that from a storytelling perspective. Uh, how powerful you make them relative to humans, etc. Highlander is kind of another series that deals with it. And I think they did a good job here making them stronger than humans, but also kind of pointing to their vulnerabilities. They have similar flaws to humans, etc. Also kind of like in Dark Souls, they made them very tall. The gods are like seven or eight feet tall, much larger than humans. So I guess you can almost call them like lords. Um, but no, like uh, that was an interesting part of the movie. The main character was, it was kind of annoying because he was like he was like an atheist in ancient Egypt, even though they were directly ruled by Osiris, which doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I, I don't think atheism was a thing back then. And, but he was kind of obnoxious and his, his GF was really QT. So I guess that kind of was all right. And she was very devout, devoted to the gods. So, like, basically what happens plot-wise is Osiris is going to pass the mantle of leadership onto his son, Horus, who just kind of drinks and parties and has orgies and stuff and is completely irresponsible. And Set shows up and kills Osiris and beats the crap out of Horus and pulls out both of his eyes. And kind of leaves him to to die and he takes Hathor Horus's queen and he becomes pharaoh of Egypt 
and his goal is to basically eat all of creation and take it within himself so that he will be completely immortal. I know it doesn't make a ton of sense. The theme of the afterlife is very important in this because it was extremely important to Egyptians. And you have kind of a cool scene where um, they, they have the, the feather of truth. And kind of one of the differences, there's an ideological difference between Set and Horus, where Set believes only money can buy the, your way into the afterlife. Whereas in Horus and Osiris believe that people are redeemed through their their actions. So that's kind of part of the subtext of the movie. So the main character, um, his QTGF is the secretary of the master builder. So he gives the blueprints. She gives the blueprints of the like the treasure trove where they're hiding Horus's eyes and he goes and he steals one of the eyes back and gives it to Horus but his GF gets killed so he makes a deal with Horus that Horus will bring his wife his wife who back from the dead provided he helps him get his other eye so then we have like a buddy cop journey where Horus is kind of an asshole and him and the uh the main character kind of start they don't like each other, but as it goes along, they kind of like it becomes a buddy cop film. They get to fight like giant stone cobras and like minotaurs and stuff, and it's a lot of fun. A lot of kind of cool action scenes. Toth shows up, who's pretty funny. He's the god of wisdom, and he's just obsessed with learning everything. And he's like, I only know 48% of all, of all knowledge. And ex I only have 48% of all knowledge in existence i'm not even halfway there and they like bully him to come and answer the uh they have to answer the sphinx's riddle to get into uh seth's palace so you got that you have uh set kills um uh, kills Ra, or it turns out he doesn't kill him but he, he beats the crap out of him and he steals his uh spear so we can rebuild the world the plot's not super important but it's kind of about horus gradually growing up becoming a better person realizing how much he loves hawthor realizing that mortals have inherent worth etc and in general just becoming a better man and he's ultimately kind of through his redemptive hero quest is able to beat set even with a, with a single eye and he eventually gets his second eye back and he becomes pharaoh of egypt and Ra grants him a boon, and he uses the boon to uh, resurrect uh, his his sidekick and his sidekick's QT, and then he goes off to save Hathor. So, I thought it was a fun movie. Um, I liked it. I'd probably recommend watching it if you like mythology movies or epics or action movies. It's very flawed, but for what it is, I had a really good time, and I would recommend this, even if everybody else hated it. So, hope you enjoyed the review, and I'll talk to you guys later.